And thank you for making time to attend this presentation. Of course, I know the reason why you are here. I'm so brilliant, you just could not resist coming here to listen to me, and I appreciate that. I first would like to recognize um, the members of AWI, Association for the Advancement of African Women Economies. Ladies, could you? Yay. There's, there's several of you. Thank you for coming. Oh. Oh, man. Okay, thank you. And my talk today is going to be talking about the effect of um, role models and mentoring in reducing the gender gap. Okay. So role models, we all know who, what uh, role models are. I'm going to use this also as an opportunity to say thank you and then um, introduce two, in, three actually, important mentors um, who have played a very significant uh, effect and they've had a very profound effect on my career and otherwise personal life as well. Moabu, Professor Moabu. <laughs> of course, there is Steve, Professor O'Connor, and Anesta Aichi. So those are my mentors. No role models, mentors, and I'm gonna tell you why it's very important, at least in the discipline that I'm in. So I'll be showing a, a bunch of graphs. Now, look at this graph very carefully. It looks at economic growth, income per capita growth, PPP in constant dollars over the past 20 years. Okay, so this is the average 1994 to 2014. It clearly shows that over this 20 year period, almost all countries, developing countries, experience a significant increase in economic growth. If you take Sub-Saharan Africa, the graph kind of dwells because of the, um, the numbers, right? Increase for Sub-Saharan Africa was about 70%. Latin America was sm is smaller, about 36 or so. The MENA region, Middle East and North Africa, about 106%. Okay. So then, two, an important question that comes to bear is this. And um, as you know, the buzzword now for the international community, academics, policymakers is inclusiveness. Has growth been inclusive? The theme for the African Development Report, African Development, uh, which is produced by African Development Bank, is inclusive growth. ECA, Economic Commission of Africa, the UN in Addis, inclusive growth. Okay. So that seems to be the story, right? And inclusiveness, can, we can look at it as in a, a very broad, uh, think about it very broadly, but the focus has been on gender. Now it's gender, 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 inclusive growth, inclusiveness, inclusiveness, right? Socioeconomic inclusiveness, political inclusiveness, and um, economic inclusiveness, right? So this is the UN. You and women, and you go to the website, it's very prominent. There you go. This is African Development Bank, right? See an Africa where, so I guess I have to read. So this is a dream. See an Africa where African economic women participate fully in decision making, an Africa where women have easy access to knowledge because it has been brought closer to them, where women's skills are optimized and women's capacities tapped to engage in greater economic opportunities. Unless Africa invests heavily in gender equality, 
It will neither sustain its growth nor meet its development goals, period. Now the international community has moved on from MDG. 2015, we are done. Now we've gone to what? Sustainable development goals. Okay. The question is, the growth that has been observed in the past 20 years, is it sustainable? There's been some research done on that, and it's the only way to have sustainable growth is to bridge up, um, better still, eliminate this gender gap. So again, this is from the UN Sustainable Development Goal, which was recently adopted. I think it's September, we are still in September, yeah. So, women and girls must enjoy equal access to quality education, economic resources, and political participation. Right. So employment and leadership. This is my favorite part. Leadership and decision making at all levels. Okay. And what does that mean? You cannot have leadership and decision making, having women without higher education. We need to go beyond primary education. That is not enough. And even secondary education is not enough. Tertiary. Okay. So the question is, how do we ensure that women have socioeconomic inclusion, right? So if you're looking at a, a, a growth uh, scenario where women are contributors as well as beneficiaries of growth and development. So socioeconomic inclusion includes access to finance, employment, healthcare access, utilization of ICTs, and political inclusion. We need women to be engaged in decision-making units. In my view, the answer is education, education, education. And it's higher education. Education reduces the socioeconomic and political gender gap, right? And so the MDGs, the emphasis on primary was on primary education. Many, many countries, in particular African countries, have achieved you know, the gender parity. We need to go beyond that. And I'm gonna provide some reasons why that is the case. Now more quotes. So this is different. Yeah? Forget the international community. Educated women tend to be better nourished, marry later, have fewer, healthier, better nourished children who themselves go to school. And we, know, we all know this, but it's um, comforting to know, to, you know, to know that DFAT and other ag international agencies are embracing this concept. USAID, Steve. So this is from USAID website. Globally, girls are especially disadvantaged by poor and quality education. Yet we know that when girls are educated, their families are healthier. They have fewer children, they get married later, and they have more opportunities to generate income. Again, this is more than primary education. It's more than having a higher you know, or lower illiteracy rate. Okay, now let's go UNESCO. Okay. The point I'm going to make here is that going back to the question, how do we ensure that we have more women sitting at the table making decisions Right? And influencing policy. And that 
I make this argument that there is a shortage of women. So that's the baseline. That's where we are starting from. OK? Where are the missing women? We want 50% of um, political appointees to be women. Of course, you want well-qualified women, because they'll be making decisions for the country. Where are they? We cannot find them. So given where we are, and if we all agree that secondary and tertiary education is crucial, how do we achieve this goal and how to bridge that gap quickly? We cannot afford to wait. So my answer, and I'm going to show some evidence to support that, is mentoring and role model. I'll start with the role model effect. How does it work? It's very intuitive. Ah, you see that lady, she looks like me. And I tell them, you know what? 30 years ago, <laughs> I lived in this village. Same school. Look at me. I did it. You can do it too. That is the role model effect. The mentoring effect is taking someone under your wing encouraging them to reach their highest potential, and more importantly, especially in the professional arena, talking to them about the unwritten rules in the profession. So in that sense, I have been very lucky to have these gentlemen as mentors. And I'm going to tell you why, in my profession, you have to rely on men to be mentors. <laughs> and that is fine. And the importance of mentoring, let's look at this statement. This is from UNESCO website. A role model. A female role model can support and encourage girls to successfully complete their studies and maybe even continue studying to be teachers themselves. So you're talking about teachers as role models. And I'm going to provide some evidence. I'm um, doing some research on that, and I'm going to show you some very nice graphs to um, support the statement. She can also be there to listen to any problems and generate guidance when necessary. You will not believe the number of phone calls I made to Steve. It didn't matter at the time. I'll just pick up the phone and call. And next wakes up every day to an email from Elizabeth. She calls me Adora. <laughs> in schools where girls are in the minority, especially the presence of um, one or more female teacher may also ensure protection for girls from unwanted um, attention from boys or male teachers and even from sexual abuse and exploitation. So you have the mentoring effect and then also the role model effect. Now, the first female president of you know, Liberia, right? I like the last part of the statement. I'll be happy to serve as a role model and trailblazer, I love that, for those who will come after me. You listen to her, you look at her, I can be president too. And that's my dream from, for Ghana. I'm, from, I'm Ghanaian. <laughs> okay. Now one more statement. Okay, so this is Helen Clark, former president of, the, of New Zealand. Okay. Women leaders can play an important role through the demonstration effect. Yes. What is demonstration effect? Again, being effective leaders is the role model effect. So, as I said, you know, I'm going to show you some graphs. And economists love numbers, so I'm not going to end my talk without talking about numbers, right? So I'm looking at the role model effect and asking the question, why does it make a difference, right, when you have more women as teachers? 
So this is for all developing countries where I plot the share of female teachers and look at the repetition rate. So you can look at it as um, school performance, right? And you can see it's negatively correlated, right? So this is for 104 develop 85 developing countries, okay? Of course, it's sub-Saharan Africa. I had to throw that in since I'm African. And then this is for males, right? So from here, one can conclude that women are just better teachers, which is true because, you know, they, they have a, a positive impact on, you know, performance. So where is the role model effect coming from, right? So I have a regression and I use a GMM and all that stuff, I endogeneity, all that stuff controlled for. And this is the estimated impact on this one standard deviation increase, right, for males and females. It's like night and day, both short run and long run. It's much higher, significantly higher for females than males. That captures the role model effect. Now, this is secondary education. Now, let's look at tertiary education. So I have just five minutes. We're going to focus on my pro if economics. Most of you here are economists, right? So the economics profession is very unkind to women. In the US, the data shows that you have more female chemists in chemistry and environmental science than in economics. And so in 1973, the American Economic Association formed CSWEP, which is a women's organization. The Canadians followed suit in 1990, the UK in 1996, and then Australia in 2002. So they are, all these are in developed countries. And then China, 2003, so China was the first developing country, and hey, are we? The last is um, 2012, the most recent. And an important difference between are we and the others is that all these are country specific, are we encompass the whole of Africa. Two minutes, there you go. So for what do these um, women's associations do? They focus on mentoring, they have mentoring workshops and they have, um, so mentoring and the mentors are both mostly women and then they also serve as role models. That is what we is about. In our profession, we do recognize that. And so in terms of policy, right, it's for policymakers and the international community to spend or start thinking about such programs and um, sponsoring such programs. Let me use the last minute I have to do some, um, a little bit of self-promotion. <laughs> so this is Awi. If you don't have a brochure, please raise your hand. Tatenda is here. And a journal, those of you who work in Africa, please submit your papers to Journal of African Development. And the last is, this is a publication, the winter issue, 2015 issue, for um, the um, American Economic Association, the women's organization. And the focus on, was on associations of women economists around the group. So all the um, sex associations were featured, and AWI is on page four. So this is very important, at least in the economics profession. And we have you know, copies out here. And please join AWI. We need role models and mentors. So that means men can also join. Thank you. Thank you.